Hello everybody and welcome to this Puamaka and Partners YouTube channel. My name is Mitchell Parsonage and today I'm going to talk to you about a third party Revit plugin called OneFilter created by the company Dirut. If you haven't checked them out, I would highly recommend it. They make eight free Revit plugins designed to increase efficiency and just make your lives a little bit easier inside of Revit. So this will be an eight part video series and one video discussing each tool that they create starting with OneFilter. So what you're going to want to do is go to their website, www.dirutes.com. From there in the top right hand corner, you can go to the Revit plugins section, which will list all of the available tools. You can click on Revit plugins and it will take you to a new page again, listing the eight tools plus a custom plugin section over there. So locate the tool that you want and select details. That'll take you through to the detailed explanation of the tool itself, which lists some features, a bit about the tool and also what versions of Revit the software is compatible with. You can click on free download and there you can proceed to enter your name, your email address, as well as the company that you work for. Once that information has been filled out, you can select submit and after a few seconds, you will receive a download link. Click on download and you can wait for the download to complete. Once the download has completed, you can extract the files from one filter, right click, extract, extract wherever it is that you want, and then run the install file. And from there, you are ready to start using the app. The next time that I open my Revit app, I will now have a Dirutes tab at the top of the screen if I haven't already downloaded one of their softwares already. So clicking on Dirutes will give me a list of all of the tools that I have available from Dirutes. So we're going to be looking at one filter. And the first thing you'll notice is that you do have a split button, the one filter tool, and then something called the selections manager, which we will get onto at a little bit of a later stage. So I'll just go to one filter for now. And just a brief recap of the features before we get started here, you can find Revit families by uh, their categories. You can find Revit families by parameter names as well as parameter values. You can find Revit elements inside of a room space or area, and you can also colorize Revit elements by parameter name. So those are just some of the features that come with this software. So starting off with the workings of the tool, the first thing that I want to point out is that you can double click on the word one filter here to collapse the one filter software. Keep it open, but you can still continue to work on your model while that tool is running. Double clicking it again will bring it back. So let's start off with the basics, which is just a very simple filter. If I want to take a look at only air terminals as an example in my project, I can, I can tick air terminals. One filter will give me a detailed breakdown of all the air terminals in my project split up by their family name as well as type as well as account. If I want to isolate those elements, I can tick the ones that I want to look at and I can select isolate selection. If I go to my Revit model, it will temporarily hide everything else except those items. When I'm done with that, I can go back to Dirutes and unisolate selection to get my full view model back. Let's get more specific with our search. We've got all of our air terminals, but now perhaps we want to filter them by, let's say the system name. So I can choose the parameter type. I want to do an instance parameter. The parameter that I want to filter by is the system name. And I want the system name equals to one of the system names that I have in my project. So I can either start typing out here, but what I can do instead is just click on the search menu and hit one of the arrow keys on my keyboard down, for example. When I hit that once, I will get a list of all of the system names currently in my Revit project that I can choose from. So for this example, AHU06, click filter. That will greatly reduce the number of air terminals that I have as well as the count as well. And again, I could do the same things like isolate that selection. And now I know that I'm only working with air terminals that have the system name AHU06. So a couple of the other features that I have here is that I can create a selection set. So if you're familiar with Revit selection sets, it works the same way. So I'm gonna click save selection and I can input a name here. So I will call it air terminals, AHU06 and save. And what that does is that creates a selection set in Revit. So if I go to manage and I go to load under selection, I can select air terminals. I can say, okay, and that will automatically select those air terminals for me. Something else that I can do here, if I want to create a view of this information over here, I can do that from one filter as well, clicking this little button over here. So if I click on this little box, I can select the 3D view that I want to apply this to. So if I leave it as 3D view and I click apply, it will 
basically isolate the current 3D view to show me this information. But I can also duplicate the selected view, give it a name, and I can choose to isolate the selected elements or not. So if I say isolate selected elements, click apply, it will create a 3D view for me with the name air terminals and it will isolate those elements for me. And I can of course change my information here whenever it is that I want. I can add more categories to my search list over here. Something that I can also do is I can export the information to Excel, the, the, the ticked information. So I can say export to Excel. I'll just save it as that. And I can say, okay, and that'll open up that information for me really nicely laid out inside of Excel as well. Okay, so let's move on to rules and sets. So in rules and sets, I can get more specific with my search conditions. So I will use air terminals as an example again. Okay, and now I can apply some rules down here at the bottom. So I've got this default set over here, which is and so you've got two search results, you've got and or you've got or. So I'll start with and and I want to apply a rule over here. So I wanna say, okay, when the, again, we'll, we'll use system name as an example. When the system name equals, let's say AHU06 again, and I wanna add a new set. I'll leave it to and, and I'll add another rule. So this is also very similar to the way that Revit works. And I would say, uh, when the level equals, let's say second floor plan. So how this reads is, I want you to look at all of the air terminals in my project, and when the system name equals AHU06 and the level equals second floor plan, I want you to find those elements. Okay, now I could do or. Only one of those statements need to be correct um, in order to return the results. If I select and, both need to be true in order to return the results. So I'll say and, I'll click on filter, and here are all of my air terminals that are part of the system name AHU06 and are found on the second floor. And again, I can isolate those inf those elements. So that is the rules and sets. You get a bit more of a detailed filter. Contains, this is a really nice one as well. This is why I have this little information over here. This is effectively just four walls and it's got a room with a whole bunch of ducts and duct fittings placed into it. So what you can do here in one filter is that you can choose if you wanna search through areas, rooms, mass spaces, zones, etc. So I'm gonna go with rooms. Now you see that I have one room available to actually search in. So I could click on that and then I could say, I wanna know how many ducks, for example, are in room number one. So I can tick that, I can say find, and that will give me a little breakdown over here. And it will say that I've got 20 ducks inside of room number one. So I can do this with furniture, I can do this with mechanical equipment, I can do it with anything that I basically want to search for, but I can now do it by rooms, spaces, or areas. Okay, then we've got visualize. Visualize is another way to make sure that all of your information is basically just correct. You can quickly see uh, information that has the same system name, classification, whatever it is. So for this example, I'm gonna work with only ducks. I would like to visualize the ducks and I want you to split the colors based on the level that they're on. So that is what this information is basically giving me here. Now what I can do is I can apply these colors directly to the ducks himself in the model by clicking apply colors. Collapse this, I can see that it's automatically gone and applied those colors to my Revit elements themselves. And what I can do here is I can export this to Excel and it will export the colors as well. If I'm not happy with those colors, I can randomize the colors to get a new set of colors to appear. Or what I can do is I can use this just for verification purposes to make sure that the ducks on the same level are in fact referenced to the same level. And then I could just say reset overrides to get my normal Revit colors back if I have my own filters applied, for example. What you can also do from here, if I apply those colors again, is that I can create a legend from this information. So I can click create legend, I will give it a name and I'll call it ducks for now, it's fine. Um, I don't want to itemize every instance. Okay, and I'm gonna click on create. And if I go to my project browser and I look under legends, I've got ducks. And if I go there, I will get an automated legend that is displayed, uh, which is color coded to the level parameter. This is a really useful tool. If you want to see what families and types are available, you can also just apply the colors to that so that you can quickly see where you have the different families and types and whether or not they should be there or not. So there's a lot of verification things that you can do with this tool as well.
selections are the selection sets that I created earlier. So if you remember when I filtered my air terminals, I saved the selection. That is this information over here. So if I tick that, I will get a list of those air terminals I saved earlier and I can make modifications to this as I want to. Finally, we've got rule filters and rule filters are your standard Revit filters that you have created yourself. So ones that exist in your visibility graphics, for example, you can select them and again, you can make changes to them. So that is pretty much everything inside the one filter tool itself. And then I've got that selections manager. So if I click on the selections manager, I've got two things that appear over here. Firstly, I've got saved selections, which I'm on right now. And then I've got rule based filters. And there's three things that I can do. So this was from the selection set that I created earlier. Remember those air terminals that I created and I saved the selection of them, which just relate to AHU06. If I want to very quickly select those, I can just click on this little square right here and it will automatically select, as you can see from my filter here, those 36 air terminals. I can also make modifications to it. If I click on the little pencil, it will open up the one filter again and take me to that location. And then I can just delete it as well. My rule based filters are exactly the same thing, except they work directly again with my uh, filters that I have created myself in my visibility graphics. So all of these filters that I have over here will be available for me to select and apply right from this rule based filter selections manager on the right hand side over here. That is it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Look out for the rest of the videos coming soon. Thanks very much for watching.